You could call me on my cell phone But I'm too busy beefing Kanye Call me on my cell phone I'll get back to you another day <laughs> Cause I'm too busy beefing Kanye <laughs> I'll get back to you another day <laughs> Goodness, honestly. Hi lovelies, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's Read the Room for Drake and Kanye. If you are new around here, Read the Rooms are a collective reading. It's when I pull on more than one energy, um, so we're reading a whole room, you know? There's only two people in the room today, but with the current beef that has been ongoing between the two, I thought it relevant to read for them together. So if you do enjoy this reading, please do hit a lovely thumbs up. If you are into psychic or spiritual content, remember to subscribe. I upload videos like this every single week. I have a whole load of library of psychic readings that you can go back and watch. So do subscribe if that's what you're into. If you are looking for your own personal and private reading, I do also offer those over on my website, which is www.kirstielewis.com. And if you do enjoy this um, reading, please do hit a lovely thumbs up, but let's get into it. So. Today we are reading for Drake, born on the 24th of October, 86. I, for some reason, thought Drake was way older than 34. I don't know why, but I thought he was so much older. And we're also reading for Kanye, who was born on the 8th of June, 77, and he's 44 years old. So, let's initially start with the beef, okay? I don't actually know where this stemmed from or why. I feel like Kanye may have said things he shouldn't have. Are we surprised? Absolutely not. But I do instantly feel that Drake is the provoker of this. I feel like there's a lot Drake does behind the scenes that we don't see. I just feel this energy of him continuously poking and prodding Kanye. And I've got the cards here, so I'm just going to shuffle as I read and see what kind of pops out. I see him, I feel him, sorry, consistently like poking Kanye. And then of course, Kanye explodes publicly. So whatever Kanye does, he does it publicly. He doesn't care. He has no inhibitions. So he's just like, whatever. Most, and then Drake just sits back like, <laughs> like, because no publicity is bad publicity. And I feel like for Drake, he knows, okay, I've got this album coming out. You know, how can I get people talking about it? This is perfect for him. This is perfect for him. Because he can just play Kanye like a puppet on a string. And Kanye is so like absorbed in himself that he doesn't even realize what's going on here yeah queen of pentacles this is all about money this is all about publicity the beef is real the beef is real i don't feel like this is a joint publicity stunt but for both of them it's like kanye thinks okay well if you say this i'm gonna react not realizing that drake's doing it for publicity okay and for both of them it has worked out in their favor because it's got people talking about their albums which is going to make them more money you can release an album with no like publicity but that's how that's how their world works this is all about money <laughs> this is all about money but there is there is an issue here that goes back to this isn't the king of pentacles here, this is the queen of pentacles, this is a feminine energy. And there is, I don't know, I did hear that allegedly Kim slept with Drake. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but the two of them may have been arguing over Kim, which is what caused this initial feud because obviously Drake lost out. Now Drake, I've talked about this before as I've read for Drake, Drake is a very laid back kind of guy. He's like, okay, whatever. Do you know what I mean? He's He doesn't take things too seriously because he is quite emotional and so he has his guard up a lot of the time. He can't allow himself to get too involved in things or he will get hurt. So, you know, if he doesn't get things go his way, he's like, okay, whatever, let's just move on. I'm not gonna go too deeply into it because that could be detrimental for him. Um, Kanye, on the other hand, gets very hung up on situations, <laughs> gets very deeply emotionally invested, and can't let things go. They're very, very different energies, right? They're very, very opposite. Drake can see this, and he plays on it. He absolutely plays on it. I just feel Drake plays games. He likes to sit back and laugh and be like, <laughs> how funny, like, this is how he's reacting. Like, he is a jokester. He doesn't take life seriously. Kanye, on the other hand, takes life very much um what's the word he takes everything literally whereas drake's like 
I'm not doing I actually don't care so that's kind of what I felt I put down here because I did um write some pre-reading notes when I was meditating on their energy <gasps> oh the page flip there you could have seen what I had before which is some freaky Friday stuff if you're gonna be around here in October we've got some great readings coming up I wonder if you saw that should I cut that out I don't know but I did make pre-notes anyway <laughs> Um, so I put here, isn't it a coincidence they would have a publicised beef just as they are both dropping albums at the same time? I think not. <laughs> Do not be surprised if these two come out and collaborate together in the future because, you know, they're monetizing the situation. This is their job. You know, this is their job. Their job is to monetize their music, to monetize their artistry, to monetize themselves. That's their job. So that's what's really going down. I don't feel like there's too much more to go on with it. You know, they've both dropped the albums now, so I don't really think you'll hear much more about it. But I do think actually in the future they may collaborate together, and then after that there'll probably be some kind of other beef. But I'm going to get into reading them individually now. And see what energy I pick up. Drake's energy is way more dominant here. It's way more dominant. So I'm going to leave him last. And let's start with Kanye. So Kanye. I feel like Kanye is on the verge of disappearing. Like really pulling back. And really just stepping back. And becoming reclusive. I feel like I picked up on this before. Now of course he has the ranch. But I feel like him just disappearing. I don't know if he's actually back on social media. But just we won't hear see anything from him for i put i did put here yeah a few months i don't feel like it's going to be a really long time but mentally he's not doing well he's not doing well at this time like mentally kanye west i don't feel is okay um yeah here we go king of swords mm -hmm. mentally kanye west needs to pull back um swords whenever i pull them they represent the defense you know the sword is like don't come near me i'm ready for battle Anything anyone could say to Kanye West right now is going to cause him to flip. He's very sensitive, he's very emotional, he's very on the edge, and he's not okay. Um, that's all I really put for him right now. I put, I feel like he's going to disappear, become recluse for a few months, or at least he wants to. He's mentally clouded. Kanye West, you know, there's nothing surprising or shocking here. He really needs some therapy, he needs some help. He needs, I feel very emotional with it because he really needs a support system that he doesn't have. Um, he can't cope, but he's trying to just go on. I don't even know if he realises he can't cope because he's so used to feeling this way. This is a normality for him. Um, and it's going to become a bit too much in a sense where he does have to retreat. We may not even re realise, you know, we may not even notice that he's gone. But he will retreat in terms of his marriage let's just pick it up because i'm finding it very weird that we're still seeing kim around that we're still seeing her in fashion shows and stuff i know they're co-parenting and everything like that but you know are they still together are they trying to work through their marriage spirit can you please show us through the cards like what is going on with kim and kanye's marriage oh okay again um it's it's over it's over and i feel like as much as they may be trying to make it work or force it to work or whatever they need to just let it go um kim will hang on to kanye's every word because not for the right reasons and that's what the tower talks about it talks about a situation which is built on unfirm foundations Kim wants to be in this marriage to be in a marriage, not because she, she loves Kanye, that would be wrong to say, but not because she really wants it to work out for the best or truest intentions. She just doesn't want to get another divorce, she doesn't want to go through that again, she doesn't want to have to find someone else again, she will try and make this work, but the foundations are just not there, they're just not matched. Um, so I feel like there is some trying. They are trying. I feel like there is some trying going on behind the scenes here, but it's 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 destined to end. Um, this marriage can't go on. I don't pick up on a lot around Kanye right now because I feel Kanye is in the midst of transition. And when we are transitioning, there's nothing that's cemented. Everything is up in the air. Kanye is going through... he's breaking down to break through we may have feel like we may have felt like we'd seen kanye break down before i don't think we truly have 
everything, when we transition, everything that we know falls away. So you may get divorced, you may lose your job, you may have all these things happen to you. And I feel like that's where Kanye is now. He's having to let everything go. He's having to shed so that he can come back new. Kanye West, I feel, is going to have a rebrand, like a whole new refresh, refreshed energy. When we see Kanye again, I feel drawn to 2022 with this. It's going to be like he's a brand new person. This person that we saw who was having outbursts, who was sporadic, who was spontaneous, will be no more. When we see Kanye emerge from the ashes, he's going to be a lot healthier. His mind is going to feel a lot better. He may even be in a new relationship. There's just a whole new energy coming for Kanye over the next two years. But don't be surprised if you see even more drama come for him before that because in life we have to break down to break through and that's very much happening to Kanye. You may hear of Kanye being in debt, you may hear of Kanye losing cars, um, business deals, um, brand deals, you may hear of him breaking down, you may hear all of these things. Spirit is coming through very strongly to say that he has to go through this so that he can get to the place of purity. Everything that's happening for him is happening in his best interest. And this, when you see Kanye, see it as a reflection of your own transition because he is transitioning and transition is ugly. It's not pretty. But in the next two years, I do see him. I see him coming, his skin's clear, he's glowing, he's smiling, he's happy. I see him recovering and then going on to talk about it. And so him and Kim are meant to be separate. I've said that many, many times before. He is about to go through a lot of turmoil, a lot of turmoil. He's been through a lot of turmoil. He's about to still go through it. He will retreat and in like the next two years, you'll see him come back better than ever. I just see Kanye coming back. I've said before coming back as his old self, but actually no. Coming back as a new Kanye, as a better Kanye, feeling better about himself. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Let's move on to Drake. Okay, so, really interestingly, since I last read for Drake, the energy has changed. Um, Drake has matured a lot over the past few years. The last time I read for him, for him, I picked up on this real player energy, these player vibes, this guy that was going worldwide, Mr. International. I feel like COVID actually hit Drake a lot. COVID allowed Drake to, like it did for many of us, sit back and really reevaluate his life. Drake is a very deep soul, but he doesn't like to show it. He, on the outside, likes to be very surface level, and at surface level, <laughs> surface level. And as I talked about earlier, oh, before I go further, if you've got this far, comment down below your favorite Kanye and Drake song. For me, my favorite Kanye song is probably, I actually love Jesus Walks, I love gospel, and so I am a sucker for really anything Kanye does, because I do love gospel music. And for Drake, my favorite um, Drake song is um, Look What You've Done. I think that's such a beautiful song. And you actually see his vulnerability in that song. So yeah, if you've got this far, comment down below your favorite Kanye and Drake song. So yeah, Kanye, I mean, Kanye, Drake doesn't like to let people show, let people see that he's vulnerable, but he is. He's a very vulnerable, sensitive, deep soul, but you'd never know it. He doesn't make deep, vulnerable music. His music is quite lighthearted. He likes to keep things lighthearted. He likes to come across chill, non-bothered, um, and just a person that is just coasting through life but really under the surface he's got a lot going on and covid forced drake to really sit back and think oh this is a bit life's a bit more real than i've thought it was over the past few years drake wants to settle down drake wants to settle down and i picked up before last time i read for him back in 2019 he did not want to settle down i didn't see a marriage coming for him for a long time that has changed I said in my pre-notes, Drake is looking for love and he's feeling lost. Drake wants a partner. He wants someone to stand by him who he can lean on and support because I feel what happened was when COVID hit, Drake didn't have a support system. His friends and everything, they went home to their partners. They went home to their families and Drake was like, oh, what do I do here? Um, Drake is going to be part of a power couple. I really do feel it. Drake is going to... 
Yeah, here we go. Five of Swords, unhappiness, sadness. I feel that within him. He would never let it show, but really, he went through something. He went through some kind of emotional turmoil, which made him feel like he has to change something. And I really do... Oh, I really do feel... Oh, interesting. King of Swords. Again, doesn't want his heart to get broken, doesn't want to get hurt, has his sword firmly in place you can't get close to me i'm not gonna let you in he's a very defensive soul he doesn't let people like people to come in but he is gonna let his guard down i feel like in the last here we go <laughs> here we go it's coming if we flick and fast the last reading i did for drake i picked up on a model i still pick her up when i tapped into her energy i was getting like laurie harvey vibes winnie harlow vibes this is a woman of color this is a woman who is in the industry who's very highly thought after very attractive very beautiful um and they are gonna ha i my heart just warms when i think of this i get such butterflies he's gonna be part of a power couple three of cups is about celebration marriage growth healing this woman's gonna come into his life and he's not even gonna expect it he's not even gonna see it coming actually i feel like he knows this woman and they may have been together before i think i talked about that as well there's a reconciliation, there's a coming back together, there's a growth for them, they're deciding to move forward. It could even be Laurie Harvey or Winnie Harlow. It is someone who is younger than him, because I do feel there's an age gap. Um, he is a young spirit, so he needs to be with someone who's younger than him. And I feel a baby girl coming for them as well. I feel like he's going to have more children. There's a marriage coming. Um... And I pick up, this isn't like nearby, this is in like, I'd say the next five years as he, he is going to be older as he moves towards like 40 years old. Um, because although he's thinking about it, he's still got these commitment issues, he's still got his barriers up, he's still got his guard up, there's a lot of work to be done before he can really let someone truly in. But the most beautiful thing I feel about these two is they've got a really beautiful friendship. And he, and, and let me tell you something about Drake. All right, when Drake's guard is down, when he loves you, this is the kind of man you want to love you. He is going to adore her. I'm talking about lavishing her with attention, gifts. Um, not that gifts are everything, but emotionally he's going to be present. Drake's guard is usually up because he knows that when he falls for someone, he gives everything. And he does also know that right now he can't really give everything. So when he does fall, it's head over heels. It's everything you could dream of. It's the whole package. I also feel for Drake um, that he has got a film coming up. I picked on that before. I feel like he's going to actually dive more into acting because he's a great actor, I feel, and he's very, very passionate about acting. But the main thing I really did feel for Drake is this loving relationship that is coming into his life. And it feels so intense, so passionate, so amazing this may even be a rapper but she's young i feel like sweetie winnie harlow laurie harvey you know that kind of vibe um and they have a really beautiful relationship really beautiful i feel like they're gonna have quite an open relationship it's not one that's quite private or behind the scenes you will see them on red carpets together you know very much a power couple that people look um that people look to and call it hashtag goals you know that is what we're gonna see with drake so that's where I feel like they are at the moment. Um, I feel like Drake's kind of, after this album, put it put music down and he's ready to kind of do a bit more acting. I do see him doing acting um, and getting more involved in the film industry. I feel like that's something he's very interested in, especially long term. Drake wants to get involved in movies, in, in shows, in film. It's something he's quite passionate about. But in terms of the beef to Drake, it's just a joke. I even put here, Drake sees Kanye as a big joke. The beef is real, but both sides are playing on it. So bear in mind, there's there's benefits for both of them in this situation. Um, and, you know, although the beef is real, I don't feel like it's catty. It's not like something where if they were in the same room as each other, they'd start having a fist fight. No, they both understand what they're getting from it. Well, Drake more so than Kanye. Kanye's a bit more reactive and impulsive. <laughs> but it's, it's good publicity for the both of them. And Drake knows if he, like I said, if he provokes Kanye, that Kanye will buy it. And Drake isn't mad about that. Drake's like, great, great publicity. Let's do it, you know? So yeah, um, they're both on completely different ends of the spectrum going in complete different directions but yeah i'm really looking forward to see drake in a committed loving relationship because i just do feel he's got so much to give in that way and i don't feel like there's any much more to say on it than that 
So I do hope you enjoyed this Read the Room. If you did, please do hit a lovely thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to join our lovely community if you are into psychic and spiritual content. Like I said, I upload it every single week. If you are looking for your own personal and private reading with me, then please do visit www.kirstielewis.com for more information. Hit a thumbs up if you enjoyed the reading and I will see you soon for another video, lovelies. Bye! Thank you.